Awesome. So now we are going to talk about, so, so we've broadly covered, right, um, uh, what's the meaning of an employee benefit plan, you know, then we talked about what a short term employee benefit plan, and then we talked about what's a defined contribution plan, and then what's the defined benefit plan, and then what are the different components of a defined benefit plan, how do you accounting for a defined contribution plan, and then in relation to a defined benefit plan, we in a way spent a whole lot of time, right, um, to understand in fair degree of detail the different concepts and nuances and the accounting, the general entry. In the process, you also picked up a question which was there in your exam, right? Um, and, and then we went through the solution. The key here is that you got to have good understanding of data, right? Uh, you had to have good understanding of how the actuarial uh, model going to work in, a, in the case of a defined benefit plan which uses a projected unit credit method uh, in a way to determine uh, an obligation and, and then discount to the present values, several assumptions, right? Demographic assumptions, financial assumptions, so on and so forth. So all of that, all of that is what will help you uh, in terms of having a better perspective, right? Having a better perspective on accounting for employee benefit plans, right? And now we're going to talk about the other long-term employee benefits and then of course we are left with the the curtailment and the settlement uh, uh, piece around that you know we also talked about uh, some of the things like the multi-employer plan and all of that so i mean they are good uh, uh, you know i don't expect that a lot of questions will come on some of those uh, but even if if it were to come you would just apply a common sense right uh, if there's a multi-employer if there's a sharing of obligation if I don't have a right over these assets, then I don't have to record them. Uh, if, if I have an obligation to fund it, then that's an, that's a cost to my PNL. And you got to also be careful that what goes into the PNL. We saw, you know, several places that it, it may get capitalized as part of inventory or it or as part of the uh, fixed asset or as part of intangible asset, you know, uh, so on and so forth. So now we will talk about other long term employee benefits what what are these normally we see these as say bonus right uh, if i'm paying a bonus to an employer or a retention scheme which i have or a or a long let's say a long service recognition award right uh, say somebody going to complete five years of service or going to complete 10 years of service uh, you know so on and so forth there are a variety of such award reward programs which we see in organization uh, all of them are then uh, going to club under long-term employee benefits, other the other long-term employee benefits plan. So uh, what are these? Uh, they are, are those which are not expected. Other long-term employee benefits are those employee benefits which are not expected to be settled wholly before 12 months, after the end of the annual reporting period. So things which go beyond 12 months, they are no longer short-term, hence they become the other long-term, right? Um, and the measurement of the other long-term employee benefit is not usually subject to the same degree of uncertainty as the measurement of the post-employment benefit because there are not too many variables, right? Here, unlike, um, unlike a defined benefit where there are too many variables here, too many assumptions, here the assumptions are limited to say that at, at best it can be a discount rate and, and the attrition rate, right? Uh, so to say. So that way it's easy, right? Uh, it is also there that the introduction of a changes to other long term employee benefits rarely causes a material amount of past service cost. Okay, and we talked about past service cost, which is to say that if you are if you are if your benefits which you are entitled for, you know, which you earned in the past, they are now changing because of the change in law, because of the change in the scheme, right? Uh, which impacts what your benefits which accumulated or vested, you know, that is what is being called as past service cost. This, this method does not recognize measurement in other comprehensive income as, as required under the accounting requirement for post-employment uh, benefits. So everything, whatever the changes here, all of that goes into profit and loss account, okay? There's nothing goes into uh, uh, OCI here, right? And, uh, as, as you saw in the, in the post-employment benefit where we use the actuarial, right? That, that is where the actuarial gain or loss or the remeasurement gain or loss uh, those goes into OCI, but here it doesn't go into OCI. 
even if let's say you said that there will be 20% attrition and hence i would i don't want to pay bonus to everyone and we saw in several places like the profit sharing plans where 8% and 7% you actually ended up paying 7.2% the delta of 0.2 then that goes to pnl only it doesn't it doesn't go to other comprehensive income okay now what to recognize in the balance sheet uh, is the present value of the obligation at the end of the reporting period minus what's uh, fair value of the end of the reporting period if there are any plan assets in relation to this and that becomes your um, you know or liability or the asset as the as the case may be uh, what to recognize uh, in the pnl uh, is your current service cost plus your interest cost uh, minus your income if you are getting an income uh, plus your past service cost, all of that, uh, and if there are any any uh, curtailment or settlement, all of that goes into your profit and loss account. There's nothing called here actuarial gain or loss. And here also, again, uh, you have to if you have uh, um, you know inventory under in day S two uh, or sixteen or thirty eight, you just need to be mindful of that. If there are people who are working on projects which are getting capitalized, then these cost also for the portion for which they are working, that also is going to get capitalized from that perspective. Okay, so now we are going to talk to you about the termination benefits, right? Um, and uh, um, we also see this commonly in many organizations that organizational, let's say, have to retrench people. We saw this in the COVID times. Uh, that many organization had to retrench uh, uh, employees and then when you retrench let's say you pay three months of salary or uh, or many many paid differently depending upon the philosophy or the policy of the organization and many times depending upon the law of the land as well is you need to determine as to how much uh, i need to pay uh, in relation to such termination or settlement um, uh, with with employees so the standard deals with the termination benefit separately from other employee benefits because the event which give rise to an obligation is the termination of employment rather than the employee service. The obligation is the termination of employment, right? Uh, rather than the service itself, right? Uh, termination benefits uh, results from uh, either an entity decision to terminate the employment, uh, or an employee decision to accept an uh, entity offer a benefit, uh, like a, like a, you know uh, uh, VRS, right? Uh, voluntary retirement schemes, right? Uh, like VRS, in exchange for termination of employment, both of them uh, in a way are, are termination. So, looking at the recognition, uh, you got to record a liability and expenses for termination benefit at the earlier of the following dates. I think this is important for you to, this is a principle, right? So at the earlier of the following dates, when the entity can no longer withdraw the offer of those benefits, and when the entity recognizes cost for a restructuring, which is within the scope of India's 37, and involve the payment of termination benefit at the earlier, right? Uh, when you made a commitment, you no longer, you can't withdraw these, then you have to record the cost or, you know, if you're recording a restructuring cost as per the uh, scope of India's 37 and it requires um, uh, in payment of termination, then you need to record this. Now, for termination benefit, right, payable as a result of employee to accept and offer a benefit like VRS, uh, the time when an entity can no longer withdraw the offer to termination is the earlier of when as an employee you accept right uh, when the employee accepts the offer and when a restriction on the entity ability to withdraw the offer takes effect that means you have accepted it now i can't take it back so now if let's say there's a finality to the offer right um, there's no other uncertainty that is the point in time you record the cost okay now when an entity recognizes the termination benefit the entity may also have to account for a plan amendment or a curtailment of other, if there are associated plans which are getting impacted, uh, you know, plan amendment or curtailment or uh, in a way other employee benefits may get impacted. So that's the recognition part at the earlier of, right? Uh, in a way, I, I now can't go back. Now, if you can't go back as an entity, right, then you need to record this, right? That becomes a recognition. Now, how do I measure it, right? Uh, then I have to deal with the measurement criteria, okay? Uh, you measure the termination benefit on initial recognition 
and shall measure and recognize subsequent changes if there are subsequent changes uh, based on the nature of the employee benefit uh, and and uh, if there are an enhancement to post employment the entity shall apply the requirement for post employment benefit uh, as well otherwise it gets recorded uh, i expect it to be paid wholly uh, before 12 months after the end of the reporting period uh, entity shall apply requirement for short term employee benefit right if it's going to get paid that means no discounting right no discounting is required now if they are expected to be paid wholly after 12 months right uh, then you need to apply the requirement of other long term employee benefit that means i need to do a discounting as well so we're going to deal with this now with the help of an example okay now as a result of a recent acquisition an entity plans to close a factory in 10 months and at that time terminate the employment of all of the remaining employees at the factory okay so uh, you plan to close a factory in 10 months awesome <laughs> and uh, at the time you want to terminate also okay bad uh, because the entity needs uh, expertise of the employee at the factory to complete some contract, it announces a plan of termination as follows. Each employee who stays and renders service until the closure of the factory will receive until the closure of the factory, right, which is 10 months, right? Remember why 10 months is important, right, is because then it becomes a short term uh, benefit, right? Um, will receive on the termination date um cash payment of INR 30,000. Employee leaving before closure of the factory will receive INR 10,000. That means I'm trying to incentivize, right? Uh, if you leave anytime, you're going to receive 10,000. If you stay um, till the time we close, then you're going to receive 30,000, okay? So any employee leaving before closure of the factory will receive INR. That means everybody will receive 10,000, right? Uh, but if you were to stay back, work, uh, you will get 20,000 extra. So what's the termination benefit, right? And what's the other benefit, you know, from, from that perspective here? So there are 120 employees at the factory. Now, at the time of announcing the plan, the entity expects 20 of them to leave before closure. So how many employees I have? 120. 20 will leave before closure. Therefore, the total expected cash outflow under the plan are 32 lakhs, right? Which is, uh, I have to pay how much? 30,200, right? Uh, and uh, 20, uh, 10,000 to 20, right? Which is okay. As required by paragraph 160, the entity accounts for benefits provided in exchange for termination of employment as a termination benefit and accounts of benefit provided in exchange for services as a short term. So there are termination benefits and then there are short term employee benefits. The question here is how much is termination? How much is short term, right? So now when you look at termination, everybody is entitled for those that 10,000, right? So essentially uh, the benefit provided in exchange for termination is 10,000. So this is the amount that you need to pay whether you stay in service or whether you don't stay in service, right? So um, um, even though the employee, so this has to be paid, even though the employees can leave before closure, the termination of all employees' employment is a result of the entity decision to close the factory and terminate their employment, right? Uh, from this perspective, that is why the 12 lakh, 10,000 into 120, 12 lakh is the termination benefit, right? 12 lakh is the termination benefit. That means the balance 20 lakhs is the for short-term employee benefits, right? For those who decided to stay, they are getting incentivized extra. Now that is your short-term employment benefit, right? From that perspective, so benefit provided in exchange for services, which is the, the incremental benefit that employee will receive if they provide services uh, for the full 10 month, right? Uh, and that is 20,000, right? Uh, uh, as an expense of INR, uh, you, know, uh, you know, 20 lakhs, right? Uh, so in this example, discounting is not required. Expense of INR uh, 20 lakh uh, is, is uh, uh, 2 lakh is recognized in each month, right? Uh, 2 lakh is recognized uh, in each month. The total expense of 20 lakh during the service period of 
10 months with a corresponding increase in the carrying amount of the liability, right? Um, with a corresponding increase. So let's just, let, let me just go back. Um, sorry, let me, so here also it is important the timing of the recognition. I think I missed uh, uh, impressing upon this point, right? Uh, entity recognize the liability of 12 lakhs for the termination benefit provided in accordance with the employee benefit plan at the earlier of when the plan of termination is announced and when the entity recognizes the restructuring cost associated with the closure of the factory. So essentially this 12 lakh you will end up recognizing at announcement. Okay. Now, if we go forward here, the balance 20 lakhs, right? That is what you're going to recognize every month, 2 lakh every month. And that's the important thing, right? So if you're a quarter in between or a year in between, right? Uh, that's where your balance sheet PNL uh, are going to look very different, right? So the 12 lakh is a hit immediately, whereas this 20 lakhs is going to come over the 10 months period, right? And that's the reason this distinction that how much is termination, how much is other short-term employee uh, benefit in a way becomes very, very important from a timing. And that's why I said, remember the principle. If there's a termination benefit on the day you announce the termination, on the day as an employee accept the termination, I can't go back. That is the day. You don't then say that this employee is continuing in my employment for four more months. So I'm going to prorate the termination cost over next four months. That's not allowed, okay? Once you announce the termination, I know how much I need to pay and the employees are there. That's the cost I need to record immediately earlier. Okay. That's the, that's the recognition principle. Okay. Awesome. So now we're going to talk about a few other issues, right? Um, in relation to employee benefits. So uh, there could be limit on defined benefit asset. There are minimum funding requirement and, and how do I deal with the uh, interaction uh, between all of them, right? Uh, there could be uh, availability of a refund or reduction in future contribution. So you got to look at again, uh, the legal law, the terms of the plan and all of that uh, economic benefits. So this is in the context of again, asset ceiling, right? Uh, we talked about that asset ceiling. Uh, economic benefit is available in the form of reduction of future obligation, right? That's what I need to pay or I can get refund also. Uh, getting a refund is really tough, right? Under the laws of several jurisdictions I've dealt with, uh, you don't get refund from the, uh, you know, um, retirement funding plans, right? You may, it may, it may allow you that to reduce your future obligation if there is a surplus, right? In the, in the plan, it does not depend upon how the intent, how the entity intends to use the surplus. Uh, not to recognize uh, future amounts of refunds or reduction based on assumption that they are mutually exclusive uh, and uh, and NDS-1, uh, NDS-1 requires disclosure about future uncertainty causing material adjustment to the carrying amount of the net defined benefit liability or asset. Okay. Nitin? इसका कहने का मतलब गलती आप ही की है मैं बोल रहा हूं मैंने गलती नहीं की नहीं नहीं सर बड़ी बोल रहा नहीं आप ही ने किया है गलती से हो गया गलती से ही हुआ समझ रहा हूं ऑल राइट सो दे कुड बी अ लिमिट ऑन डिफाइंड बेनिफिट एसेट्स सो लेट्स जस्ट लेट्स जस्ट लुक एट दोस प्रिंसिपल्स सो अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ अ रिफंड और रिडक्शन राइट दैट इन अ वे बिकम्स अ पार्ट ऑफ द एसेट सीलिंग दे आर हाउ डू यू डिटरमाइन देम इन अकॉर्डेंस विद द टर्म्स एंड कंडीशन ऑफ द प्लान Economic benefit is available in the form of reduction or refund. And I was saying that I have rarely seen refund, but yeah, of course it helps you uh, from a reduction perspective. It does not depend upon how the entity intends to use the surplus and not to recognize the future amount of refund or reduction based on assumption that they are mutually exclusive. Now in the S1, right, uh, requires disclosure about future uncertainty causing material adjustment to the carrying amount of the net defined benefit liability or asset. All of that is I need to disclose. There could be benefits in the form of uh, refund or contributions. Uh, if there's a right of refund, 
uh, is is unconditional. It has to be an unconditional right to refund, and it is an unconditional right to refund uh, during the uh, life of the plan without assuming that plan liabilities must be settled in order to gain refund. So, if there is a surplus, I should be able to draw the surplus, as opposed to saying that you can only draw the surplus till the time you actually pay out uh, all the liabilities, right? Uh, during uh, or assuming the gradual settlement of the plan, right? Uh, liabilities over time until all members have left the plan, right? Um, uh, you know, or, or assuming the full settlement of the plan liabilities in a single event, okay? Uh, so you need to uh, you need to look at these uh, uh, you know principles carefully. How do you measure the economic benefit, right? Uh, measured as amount of the surplus at the end of the reporting period that the entity has a right to receive as a refund less than the associated cost. Uh, if the plan is uh, wound up, uh, shall include the cost. I mean, again, the point here is what we're trying to make is that you've got to look at the terms and conditions of the plan. You've got to look at the legal jurisdiction in which the plan is there. And then you determine, right, uh, how much is you should record as a plan asset, how much, what disclosures, what uncertainty. Uh, how do I measure the economic benefits? A lot of this will be guided by uh, the jurisdiction in which that uh, the benefit plan is required to be implemented, or the way the plan has been implemented by the company, you know, in relate or the related terms and condition, right? So, uh, no adjustment is required uh, for time value of money, even if realizable in future, if determined as full or proportion of surplus rather than a fixed amount. So if there is a benefit in the form of uh, reduction in contribution, again, uh, you've got to be careful, clear that um, it is allowed against the future service cost, uh, right? Uh, over the shorter of the expected life of the plan and the expected life of the entity, if there is no minimum funding requirement for contribution relating to future service, right? These are all the limits uh, which are placed, right? Uh, the future service cost to the entity excludes amount that will be borne by employees okay um, assumptions has to be consistent with those used to determine your total benefit obligations right um, so if the no change to the benefits to provide a plan in the future can be assumed by the entity until the plan is amended and shall assume a stable workforce in the future okay uh, minimum funding requirement and their uh, interactions right um, Effect of minimum funding requirement uh, is uh, analyze the minimum funding requirement into contribution required to cover any shortfall, uh, contribution to cover any existing shortfall on the minimum funding uh, basis in respect of services already received. Uh, the liability shall reduce the defined benefit asset or increase right uh, liability, uh, you know, so that the no gain or loss is expected. Uh, similarly, uh, if there is a minimum funding requirement uh, for contribution relating to the future service, the economic benefit available as a reduction in future contribution is the sum of any prepayments made, estimated future service cost, less minimum funding requirement for future service if no prepay prepayments were made. Uh, and the last bullet we have here uh, is is when an entity determines the amount, uh, if the if the future minimum funding requirement contributions for future services exceed the future service cost in any given period, that excess reduces the amount of the economic benefit available as a reduction in future contributions. So some total of all of this is that you need to look at that how does this interact with your obligations, your assets and your future contribution, uh, minimum contributions and so on and so forth. You know, as you, as you in a way look at determining that how much asset, if there are surplus is I can record in a way that gives you a cushion in the PNL. Uh, but again, uh, the standard setters, they don't want you to record an asset till the time you have the ability to uh, utilize it or we utilize it by taking a refund or utilize it by in a way reducing your future contribution in a way from that perspective all right so now we're going to talk about the presentation and uh, disclosure and i'm going to take a pause i have a call at four right? so save it and then अपने उसके बात करते हैं चार बजे से पांच मेरी कॉल है देखता हूं कितनी देर चलती है 
फिर अपने इसकी बात करते हैं